obviously this is a uh, an area, a piece of property that you guys have never seen, and uh, for good reason, and that's because. Well, what's up, guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead, and it is a beautiful fall day in southern Oklahoma. Still seeing some, at least in my opinion, summertime temperatures. We're in that time of year where when you come outside in the morning, it's in the 50s and you want to put on a hoodie or a jacket, but by about 10 a.m., it's almost like shorts and t-shirt weather. Uh, the high today is probably going to be about 85, so it is warm, but it's a beautiful day. And about, I don't know, about two weeks ago, I mentioned I had a new tractor implement coming to uh, get a little work done on the farm. And it was, it's an implement that uh, I really never knew I needed, I guess. So I, uh, I deal with a lot of different companies, a lot of different uh, machinery and things. And we get to test out a lot of different uh, tractor implements and tools and things, anyway, anything from, you know, brush hogs and landscape rakes. And I've got a, a, a chipper that will work your little hiney off. Uh, a couple different grapples, tree shear, and all the the uh, brush cutters and stuff for the skid steer. And uh, it's just something that I really enjoy doing. Some of these implements are things that I may not need all the time, but they are very handy for a specific purpose. And it may be something that applies to someone that, that one of you guys could really use. So we get to test things out and use products and you know, not necessarily just promote everything, but test it out, see if we like it, see what we don't like, use it, and get some work done okay so today is one of those days we're testing out a new product something that i've honestly only ever used once one other time in my life and i'm very excited about this so to start with we're going to be running the tym t 574 it's a 50 horsepower tractor i believe like 46 47 horsepower at the pto and we're going to be pulling this rhino flex wing mower it's a 10 foot cut mower now i have still have one wing flipped up just so i can kind of show you guys this thing is a beast now i have not used it more than about two minutes the other night i hooked it all up tested it out for about two minutes on some short grass just to kind of get everything set up make sure i had it all ready to go for this video but today and in the you know over the next foreseeable future i don't know how long for sure how much mowing i've got to do but i've got some projects and you're going to be seeing this a little bit on the channel but uh i uh i'm excited about this one i mean if you've watched our channel for very long you know i absolutely love running equipment i've, I've said it to a lot of people they say dude if you lost your youtube career if youtube went away what would you do for a living i'm like i would have my own business running the skid steer and tractors and doing jobs for people because that's just it's, i love it it's so much fun so we're going to put this thing to work today if you guys watch uh tractor time with tim on youtube he actually used this same well not this exact one but the same model of mower from rhino ag uh he pulled it don't quote me on this but i want to say with a 25 horsepower tractor because this thing is actually rated and i think he was just testing it out to see what he could do but this thing is rated for as low as 35 horsepower. You can pull this 10 foot flex wing mower with a 35 horsepower tractor. So the TYM 574 here should be plenty of tractor to pull it. And I am using this tractor today because it has a cab and my allergies would just destroy me if I uh, use that 5835, the open cab tractor. It'd pull this thing just fine too. But uh, yeah, this is gonna be fun. So before we take off mowing, I want to check everything over, make sure everything's hooked up right. This is a, I mean, it's really, it's a very complex machine, but honestly, it's pretty simple to operate. It's just tow behind. It's not hooked on a three-point hitch. It's just hooked on a, uh, with a pin on the draw bar, and it has one hydraulic line. So one hydraulic hose runs all the hydraulics needed to operate this thing. And uh, a little backstory on it. I don't have any kind of partnership or haven't had any kind of partnership with with rhino before 
but uh, a few weeks ago, David, the guy that sold me my, my uh, skid steer, called, and, or he texted me, actually. He said, man, I'm tired of seeing you brush hog with a six-foot mower. Do all your mowing with a six-foot cutter behind the tractor. We need to get you something bigger. And I was like, well, I don't know that I really need anything bigger. I don't do a ton. But uh, he was convincing and said, hey, I sell Rhino, and I've got a Rhino 10-foot uh, flex wing mower here, and I'm going to reach out to Rhino and see if they want to partner with me and get that out to you and let you demo it. So I don't own this this uh, mower. It's a it's a, a Rhino ah a Rhino S a TS10 is the model TS10. So I don't own it, but uh, we're on a uh, like a one year deal right now between Ardmore Equipment in Ardmore, Oklahoma, who's the seller the you know the dealership and Rhino Ag. So we're gonna demo this thing over the next year and do some work. Got some projects, but I have something. <laughs> I have something you guys are gonna wanna see later in this video. I'm gonna go test it out on my field over here. I'm not gonna mow the whole field. I just wanna test it out. But I've got a place that needs a lot of work. Let's say that. And I'm not talking about Mill Creek. Okay, my height reference on some of this was a little off. You can see uh, I'm 6'3". <laughs> and this stuff is taller than what I can reach. Not all of it. I mean, I know some of it's lower, but it's a good... I mean, some of this is absolutely over 6 feet tall. And uh, as much as probably 8 or 9 feet. So, anyways, I just want to show you that. As you can see that cutter made short work of that field and also I, I do have this set at the highest cutting height that it'll do so we're we're probably uh, the rails there the skids are probably five inches off the ground so we're cutting probably leaving about eight or nine inches of actual you know height on the grass and it's very easily adjustable on the height I mean it's not just about using your hydraulics and raising and lowering 
you can uh, add and take away these little clamps right here, these little bands. Pull one off. And then you can set that down even more and that'll lower your uh, your cutting height. So I'm gonna reduce it. We're gonna do something different in just a minute, but then you can just store those like that. see that's a lot better finish cut and right now obviously the blades are brand new super sharp so you're getting a really nice cut when you cut lower to the ground now one thing I do see we do probably need to make some leveling adjustments on this and bring that front up just a little bit it seems like it's cutting at an angle downhill to me and uh, there are ways to adjust everything on here so that's not a problem I'll uh, I'll adjust it when we get it back to the house and All right, I had to make a pit stop at the house. The tractor's been running a little too hot. Typically that temperature gauge reads around 174 to 178 and we were getting up in the 190s. So came back, cleaned everything out as best I could, blew all the dust out of everything, washed it down. And uh, we're gonna see if it will run a little cooler now. And that's not anything specific to this cutter because it was doing that to me pretty much every time I used it with my six foot mower. So hopefully we solved the problem. But earlier in the video, I mentioned I was going to take you guys somewhere you've never been, you've never seen, because we have uh, something new. Um, I did not, I repeat, I did not purchase another property. But we're going to take this to another property to do some work on. And I'll explain more later, but... Uh, it's crazy how things work out you know when david called me and asked if i was you know I, if i needed this i was like well i can i can use it at mill creek a little bit but i really don't do a ton of mowing over there because we cut hay i mean i have some areas that i do i don't do a ton of mowing here because we cut hay off of our hay fields so there is some mowing but i don't do a lot however i had an idea probably three days before he called me about this for a piece of property that needs a lot of work. And I don't have to load this on the trailer to go see it. So let's drive over there. I'm gonna do a little bit of work with this. I'm probably just gonna do some initial uh, mowing for some roads and trails, because the grass, not even grass, the weeds are waist high and whew, it just kills my allergies going over there on the side by side. So let's mow some roads through there. And I'm gonna show you around and tell you just exactly what I'm up to. So logically speaking, if I'm just gonna drive the tractor there and it's somewhere that I'm gonna be working frequently, it's probably not very far away, right? You'd be right. Well, the new property that we're going to be working on is just right here. Coming up out of the creek on the uh, east side of my driveway, okay? Let's see if I can get through this gate with everything I got going on here. Woo, it's cutting it close. 
get it. So, obviously this is a uh, an area, a piece of property that you guys have never seen. And uh, for good reason, and that's because, well, I don't own it. I would love to. I've tried to. But I don't own it. So this first field that you've seen me mowing is about, about 20 acres. And it used to be very pretty, very cleaned up and very well taken care of. Matter of fact, this entire property used to be immaculate. But over the years, it's just like most old farms. They've kind of been let go and I don't want to say abused, but just not taken care of. And that, uh, you guys know that really like stirs something in my soul. And uh, as you can see, even around all of these giant pecan trees that have pecans all over them, it's just no one has taken care of it in a, probably a decade or more. I actually came in with my tractor years ago, my, my old John Deere tractor, and brush hogged around a lot of these trees and kind of cleaned up a little bit here and there because I was I had permission to hunt over here for a little while and was kind of like, well, I'll do some work to take you know make up for permission to hunt, but. Uh, most everything, well, a lot of this stuff under these trees, that rhino cutter will get it. It'll, it'll cut, it's rated for up to two inches, two inches in diameter. Now there are, you know, that cedar tree right there, it'll knock it down no problem. There's some bigger stuff in there that we're definitely going to have to get the skid steer and the brush cutters over here for. But, uh, for the most part, this field can be taken care of in just a couple hours with this 10 foot flex wing cutter. Now. This is just 20, 20, 20 acres of this property of 160. There's no way I can show it all to you today, but there's 160 acres. So let's go make some more roads and trails and drive around a little bit.
channel for, I don't know, decades. And, uh, it's not very deep, but I guess it made a good water source for cattle. So there's my mailbox that goes into my driveway right there. This is one of those areas that's bugged me for years because, well, quite frankly, I, I have to look at it every time I turn in my driveway and I just can't stand the way it looks. So this this area is going to need a lot of work with the skid steer and the brush cutters and stuff. But uh, I'll see if I can get over there with the tractor and kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I just I really want to clean it up. And we're driving through. We're mowing and driving through. And every bit of four foot tall solid weeds. There's really not much grass out here at all right now. So there's my gate and my entrance to my property. And I've got this long, you know, half a mile long driveway. And just on, you know, the east side of my, my driveway, it just looks terrible. And uh, you got a lot of bodark, what people call Osage orange growing up. Tons of cedar on this property. And uh, just, it could look so much better. It could be beautiful. And we're going to try. There you have it the quick tour of the property 160 acres and a really nice barn behind me i'm not going to take you around everywhere so 160 acres of property that i don't own that i'm going to be working on so what's the rest of the story you guys have been waiting forever so this property has been in the same family for generations probably three or four generations the lady that lives here has lived here in in her house um, all of my life. I've known her my entire life. And for the past 20 plus years, really, it's just been a lease property. Uh, different people have had cattle and horses and different things on it. And it's just kind of been let go. And every time I talk to my neighbor, she says, I'm so embarrassed with the way my place looks. If my papa, her grandpa, saw this place today, he'd skin me alive. And she knows what it used to look like and she knows the potential of this farm and it is a beautiful place it's just been let go so i'm in a uh, a little bit different of a position than most people so the property is currently leased to a friend of mine for his cattle he has a you know a livestock lease on it and he actually just renewed it in august i come up with this idea in september darn the luck right but I'm not trying to boot him off of a place where he runs his cattle. Uh, there are no cows on it right now because he's pulled them off for the winter. The last two, last two winters, he's had to pull the cows completely out of here because it's just been overgrazed. It's not been taken care of. So I come up with an idea and I approached her and I said, I want to do some work on your property. I've got skid steer. I've got a skid steer and all the brush cutters and the tractors and the, this rhino ag 10 foot flex swing mower we'll do a ton of mowing and at first you know her first initial thought was i i really can't afford to pay you to come over here and work all the time and i said now hear me hear me out i'm in a different kind of position than most people i want to lease your property you can keep the cattle the guy you know the friend of ours that he actually cuts hay for dusty and i i don't want to boot him off he can keep his cattle lease I don't, i'm not interested in in running a bunch of cows on here it would be nice if you know if we got the entire lease and that big hay meadow up front would be perfect dj could have as many many donkeys as she wanted there's probably 30 acres in the hay meadow out front that would be perfect for that but as it stands right now he's still leasing it for livestock i approached her to lease the property i know this doesn't make sense to most people financially but i'm willing to pay her 
to let me lease her place so that I can work on it. You know, and, and really, I'll tell you, I'll give you two things. My dad taught me a lot in the, the years that he was alive. He passed away when I was 21. But a couple of things he taught me were to be open and honest with people. Be up front. Let people know your intentions. This is me telling you, I'm leasing this property. I'm leasing this ground so that I can come work on it. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. She couldn't quite figure it out. She was like, wait a minute. So you want to pay me to work for free? I said, eh, yes, because I can make content and make an income. I make my living off the content for you guys. And I get to demo equipment and things. It's a win-win for her and me. And our friend that's leasing it for cattle because here I am doing all the work. Not that he doesn't work here. He, he does put in work. But I approached her with this idea listen guys this this property is 160 acres that butts up to me yes in an ideal world in a dream world i would love to own this property it's not for sale it's never been for sale in my lifetime and i don't foresee it going up for sale anytime in the in the future not for another you know who knows I, anything could happen but probably not for a few more decades if that so we'll probably never own it but it's a very special piece of property. Uh, I've spent a lot of time over here over the years hunting and helping my dad do things and, you know, just helping neighbors. One of the other things my dad taught me, though, he's, he's, you know, he taught me be open and honest and upfront with people. Let them know your intentions. I spent 14 years in law enforcement being lied to every day. I try not to uh, make any sort of deception for you guys. I don't want you guys to think I've got other motives. So the second thing is he taught me to take care of your neighbors and your elders and your older folks. Listen, I'm not calling my neighbor an old lady. I'd never do that. She's the sweetest, most awesome neighbor you could ever ask for. She's not an old lady. She's quite a bit older than me, let's just say that. And she knows what this place can be. She just doesn't have the means and the ability to take care of 160 acres. I fortunately am blessed through you guys to be able to bring my equipment out and do this kind of stuff and make an income, make a living from it and get to promote some awesome products or get to demo some awesome products. And that's awesome to me. Now I will say this, I'm going to ask you, don't, don't get all weird about this. Like nobody get all upset because Daniel's got the Mill Creek property and the Merch property and his house property. Now he's got this 160 acre property here and I'm not sure what we're going to call it. We'll just call it the Kirby place. Okay. That's their last name. We'll call it the Kirby place. Um, but I haven't purchased this place with knowing I now have no intentions or ability to purchase it, but with everything that I do and I, as much as I enjoy being on the tractors and the heavy equipment, this is a win-win for her, me and you guys. So that's where we're at with that. And I can't wait to get busy and do a bunch of work over here, bring the skid steer over here because I'm trying to stay off the Mill Creek property with the skid steer right now, if you haven't noticed because of deer season. So there's a lot of work that can be done over here. Plus maybe some, another place to, to deer hunt. Who knows? I don't know. But anyways, guys, huge thank you to, first off, David from Ardmore Equipment Sales uh, with the idea for this Rhino flex wing cutter. And secondly, thanks to Rhino for uh, trusting me with their product to send it over to demo and uh, try it out. So far, we've mowed some really tall grass, we've mowed some short grass, we've mowed a ton of weeds, a lot of little brush and stuff, and it's, it's worked great. So anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. Oh, listen, one more thing. I, I ran through a full tank of diesel, a full tank of diesel today. So yes, I do make an income from these videos, but trust me, when you guys go to our website and buy merch, you know, our hats, our t-shirts, armsfamilyhomestead.com. This is our new hat, by the way, just came out with, uh, that really does go a long ways to help support what I'm doing. <clears throat> Not all of the equipment is free. I don't want anybody to get confused. My skid steer was a very expensive piece of equipment that I purchased and we're partnering with companies for implements. So there's a lot of upkeep and a lot of maintenance and there's just a lot that goes into keeping all this stuff going. So huge thank you to you guys for purchasing our merch, hats, t-shirts, all the stuff. We couldn't do this stuff without you guys. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.